Hi, Ollie here at the Crafty Whisk. I'm going to be showing you another Z fold today, and it's called a window Z fold, or at least that's what I'm calling it. It's where you have an image that looks like it's on front of the card. When you open the card, it flips out onto the Z fold. So the stamps I'm using for the first one are from the Sassy Club called Mer Friends. And I'll just use my Misty to stamp it out. And I'm not going through the colouring today. I will list the colours below, but um, I thought I'd save you the, the time because it is quite a long video and I didn't really want to spend too much time colouring. So this is all the things I need to make the first card. And the paper I'm using is from Polka Doodles called Mermazing. And I'm just using some card from my stash. And I'm using some dies. I've got the Waffle Flower Additional A2 Layers and Heffy Doodle Mini Scalloped Imperial Rectangle. I've got the Imperial ones because the Waffle Flower is Imperial as well. So I needed to layer them together. So we're just using a base card of five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to score that in the center at four and a quarter, which gives us our normal A2 American sized card. So that's just your base card that you would do for any normal card. Now the Z fold component, I'm using five inches by eight inches and I'm scoring at four inches and six inches. I'm just checking my measurements here because my scoreboard has different measurements to my cutter. They're just slightly out, but it doesn't really matter. It will work anyway for this. I never really realized that before. I must take more of more note of that. So the first thing we're going to do is fold it in half, which is that four inch score mark. And then I'll be folding the smaller two inch bit away from myself. So that gives you your Z fold. Funny looking Z fold, but it is still a Z fold. Now, if you're going to be using pattern paper, you need to do it now before the die cutting. It just gets way too complicated otherwise. So I'm just going to trim the paper down to five and a quarter by four. And I'm just sort of choosing which part of the paper I want to keep because I've got to cut some of it off. So I opted to keep more waves than sunshine. Now, when you adhere this to the front, you have to avoid putting glue or tape on the part that you're going to be cutting out to create the window. So the die that I'm using, I'm using the smaller rectangle for around the mermaid and I'll be using the larger rectangle for the front of the card. So I'm sort of centering it as best I can and that gives me indication of where I need to apply my glue or tape. So I'm avoiding where the die is going to be cutting. And then I can run this through. Now, it doesn't matter what size your dies are. Just shop your stash and see what you have. I've got the measurements of mine up on the screen. But you can use any shape, any size. I do like to have a little bit of um, card still on all four sides, just so that the card doesn't lose integrity.
and it goes through quite easily. I just run it backwards and forwards just to make sure because you are cutting through uh, cardstock and pattern paper. The pattern paper isn't uh, too thick, but the cardstock I'm using is from uh, Kaiser Craft. And I think that's roughly about uh, 270 GSM, something like that. So I'm using the smaller layered die for the mermaid, which actually fits really nicely on the piece that was cut out from the base card. Now I'm using the scallop um, die as well as the larger of the rectangle dies that I use to cut out the front of the card. I'm nesting them inside each other and that will give me a really nice scalloped border to go around the cutout on the front of the card. So again, shop your stash for whatever you have. You don't have to do this part at all. I just felt it finished my card off really nicely. So there's a little frame and you've also got a little rectangle as well you can use for a future card. So for assembly, we grab our Z fold component, making sure the larger rectangle of it is going to be going down onto the card with the Z fold folding outwards, like so. Just give that a good burnish. Now, again, I just wanted to ink around the uh, mermaid with a similar color ink that I had for um, the cardstock. And I used uh, Lawn Fawn Merman. You know how much I like inking the sides of things. It just gives, for me, it gives a more finished look. But it is completely optional. You don't have to. So now we can start assembling the focal piece here. And now to put it in onto the actual card, what we want to do is only apply glue to the Z fold section. We don't want to put it on the left hand side at all because then the card won't open. So we're only putting it on the right hand side. So she's only stuck half down. Like so. Now if you want you can cut down the small piece that was left over from the pattern paper and pop it in behind the mermaid. And I just eyeballed this. And you can use uh, glue or tape. Glue is easier because you have to sort of shuffle it in behind the mermaid. And give it a good burnish. So you can leave it like this. It's completely fine. It's really pretty. Now before I add the frame on, I'm just going to pop some Nouveau uh, sparkle or glimmer onto her tail. My apologies for that. There was someone at the front door. So I'm just putting sparkle onto her tail and on her little accent pieces there. And it just gives a really nice subtle shimmer. And I'll also add some pearls. I thought these fitted in really nicely with the underwater theme. I love storing all my little embellishments in these little containers. It's so handy. And I get these from uh, Spotlight. And um, it comes, I think there's a set of uh, 20 or so in a box. 
So that's all the embellishments done. And now you can just pop the frame on if you want to put a frame on. And just a little bit of glue around the edge because we, again, we don't want to close the card by accidentally gluing something down that shouldn't be there. And I'm deciding if I want the shimmer anywhere else, but I decided against it. I thought, no, she's done. So for the next one, I'm using a stamp set and die set from Lawn Fawn. It's a magic iris beehive add-on. And it is uh, more magic messages, hive five, and you're a keeper. And I'm also using waffle flower um, circles. So I'm just stamping out all the little bees. These are super easy to color. I just used um, yellow and a little bit of orange for the party hat and crown. And now I'm just going to cut them all out with the corresponding dies. This is where my little mini heffy doodle becomes a little champion because it's so quick and easy. And this is the Magic Iris Beehive add-on. So it's actually meant to be an interactive uh, element in their Magic Iris um, selection. But I'm just using it as a window today. So it cuts out the center and the beehive itself. And I'm just going to use some scrap pieces of cardstock for the branch and leaves that come with it so that the beehive is hanging down from a tree. It's really good because you don't need much of your scrap at all so it's nice and handy to keep all the little scraps that you end up with just for doing little things like this. And the leaves cut out three at a time, so it's really, really good. And I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, shading on the leaves, just with some ink. And I'm just using the Lawn Fawn using freshly cut grass and celery stick. I started off using a finger dauber because I had it in the ink box, but it actually worked out better just with a small blending brush. And you can start this off with white cardstock too and do the same thing. And I pop everything into my little plate so I don't lose anything. And I thought I'll just add a little bit of shading to the beehive itself. And here I've used Alter New inks in uh, Sunray and Honey Drizzle. And I've just gone straight for the blending brush this time. Just testing the colour to make sure that I like it on that cardstock. And I'm just going over the stitching lines and around the edge. Just to define all those little bits a little bit more. You don't have to do this by any means, but it just adds an extra depth.
and it looks really dark what I've done there at the moment but once it all dries it is quite subtle it's really pretty always remember that it takes a little while for the dye ink to sink into the cardstock And I'm just blending it through just a little bit more. I don't have very much ink on my brush at a time. So I'm not actually putting down a whole lot of color. I'm just putting on a little bit. Now I started to use the circle that the beehive cut out but in, I switched it out for um, a die that is in the messages set because it had a stitched edge whereas the one from the beehive was just plain and I wanted to have the stitched edge. But again, shop your stash. If you've got stitched circles, more often than not, there will be one that would fit. And again, I'm just going around the edges of that one as well, just to tie it in with the beehive so it doesn't stand out as being something different. I wanted it to look the same. And because it's inside the beehive, so to speak, I thought, oh, it'd be fun to actually um, stencil some honeycomb in there. If I can keep a rind away from my ink there. Sometimes I wonder where my ink cubes go and now I know where they go. <laughs> he puts them places. So this stencil set is from the Hive 5 kit. And I'm just going to do just some subtle stenciling make it look like it's inside the beehive. And I'm just using my little chamois to clean it. You can use a baby wipe, you can run it under the sink, whatever you have to hand. And that's the effect there. So you've got the nice stitching and the honeycomb pattern. And now I can stamp on the sentiment that I want on there. And it's just um, a just a little note is what it is. So it can be for any occasion at all. And I'm just putting it onto the sticky grid at the back there. And I'm using the VersaFine black because it's a nice crisp black and there you go so now for the card itself it's going to be a top folding so it's 11 inches by four and a quarter scored in half at five and a half and the z fold is eight inches by five inches scored at four and six inches so it's a variation on the first window Z fold I did. And again, you just fold that one towards and then away from you to form the Z. Now it's a top folding card, but the Z fold will actually come out to the right. So I just need to work out where I want the hole to be in the front of the card. I'm not using decorative paper on this one. 
I'm just going straight onto the blue cardstock. So I'm just sort of penciling in where I want the hole to be. And then I use the waffle flower circles and get a circle that matches what I've drawn in there, which will be the center of the beehive. And just lining it up as best I can. On a magnetic plate, it's fun because it, it just stays put when the card keeps going in different directions. So I'm going to tape it down to make sure it stays put. And now you have a little blue circle for a future project because I'm not going to be using it in this one. So now we can actually start the assembly. So again, you glue down the largest portion of your Z fold onto the inside base of your card. And give it a good burnish. And now for the front, make sure the beehive fits beautifully over the circle or the cutout. Lay it down flat. And pop it on. And don't worry, I'll hide where I dropped dropped it a little bit with a B. <laughs> so now we can start looking at where we can put everything else. So I'm going to decorate the front before I touch the inside. So it's super easy, just popping the branch on and then a few leaves. I'm just using the weight there because the base card that I've used has a little bit of texture to it. And it just needs a little bit of a helping hand to make things stick down, make sure the glue goes into the grooves. I find reverse tweezers are very helpful for little small things. Because it only releases what you have in them when you press it. So normal tweezers you press to close, these ones you press to open. And you can pop some flowers onto the branch as well if you wanted to make it look like a um, like a cherry blossom tree or something like that. Okie dokies. Now again, we're only putting the glue on the right hand side. You can see where the fold line is there. And pop your little circle in. Make sure it actually sticks down. Would be good. <laughs> there we go. Give it a good burnish. And that is the window Z fold open up a few times make sure there's no rogue glue now I'm not putting pattern paper on the inside I'm actually going to be uh, stamping a little beekeeper my husband keeps bees so don't tell him but this is going to be his birthday card and I really love this little add-on set I thought it was super cute And I'm putting a little, um, a, like a beekeeper's beehive down there. That's what we have in our backyard.
and I'm going to use the magnet on my card to stamp them down so that I know they're in the right place because it's it's too much for the sticky mat. And my husband's bee suit is white, so I've just used cool greys on the bear and coloured the rest in quite neutral. And now it's time for the little bees. So I'm looking at the whole scene here of where I want everything to go. And I've got the queen bee there on the on the left hand side because you've always got to have your queen otherwise the hive doesn't function and I'm going to pop the bees up onto some uh, low height uh, dots from snazzy scrappin low loft that's the word I was looking for because this is the outside of the card you can do it without any problem at all. On the inside for Z Fold, you don't want to really have any dimension work because it can impact how the card opens and closes. Now this little stamp set always also comes with uh, sentiments and bee trails, which you can also use for butterfly trails and vice versa. <laughs> and I really like the sentiments that were in this set. I'm using two. One of them is honey and the other one is you're a keeper. And it's a bit of a play on words because my husband is a beekeeper. And he's also a keeper. <laughs> and again, using the versifying, it's a nice crisp black. And I've just also stamped some little bee trails there. And I've also just added a couple of little bees. I'm not too concerned with the Copic colouring on this. It will bleed through to the back because people will probably won't even look at the back of this little bit. If you're really concerned, you can probably pop a little bit of um, very thin white cardstock behind, but I wouldn't because it will affect how the Z-fold closes. So with the bees on the front, I'm just going to actually just draw in the little bee trails, just showing you don't have to have a stamp to do it. You can just do little dot lines or dash lines. And you can make them go wherever you want. You can make them into different shapes. And I've just used a black fine liner. So I'm just going to go over some of the details with my little jelly roll white pen as well. Just to highlight little bits of the bees and the tree and I'm just going to add a little bit of that Nouveau Shimmer to the bee wings and the bear's um, face net as well Just adds a little bit of sparkle. Now you could also use glitter here or glitter glue. And I also went and did some blue highlights on the mermaid. So what do you think of these fun little cards? I think they are super. I reckon anyone would be really chuffed to get one of these. And I think I'll be doing them a lot more. Please like and subscribe and share my little channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.